Hello, I'm Sue Romanoff, and today we're speaking with the recently appointed CEO of Erlab, which is a Swedish biotech with late stage and preclinical assets in Parkinson's disease. Welcome, Christina. Thank you so much. So, so you have an amazing pharma background. So it'd be really great if you could share a little bit of that with us and then also let us know what drew you to Erlab. So yes, of course. So I've been working with drug development uh, more than 30 years and I've been both working for the big pharma companies and for smaller bio pharma companies as well. Um, and um, I have been part of, of drug development, uh, working preclinically, but also in clinical phases and being responsible for marketed product as well. So I can have quite a broad background and have plenty of uh, experience from regulatory authorities, interactions, and um, also business development uh, um, and licensing deals, so sitting on the both sides of the table, so to say. So, uh, but I've spent a number of years working in the neuroscience field, primarily working with Parkinson disease and Alzheimer's disease. So um, during this, this year, I've had got a very good understanding of the huge unmet medical need in this area. However, it's also very complex and challenging to develop um, great uh, drugs in this field. Uh, and here comes iLab in. This is what I've seen. Uh, that is an amazing company, really. Uh, first of all, uh, with the platform that the company has, uh, which has generated five candidates in, in, in this world-leading portfolio, I would say, in Parkinson's disease. Uh, and uh, then I think the team behind the company is really uh, fantastic. Uh, it's a talented and dedicated team uh, that has been working together for a very long time, and they were really really on board already at the time with uh, Arvid Carlson in his lab. Um, Arvid Carlson who got the Nobel Prize many years ago. So um, now I'm really looking forward heading up IOLAB and, and lead the company through this exciting journey um, where we are going now to, to from here now, move in uh, and, and go into and market these products. And we will do that through um, partnering activities uh, and then eventually we will get this on the market. So that's going to be great, both for for patients with people with suffering from Parkinson's disease, but it will also increase the value for the company and the shareholders. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It's a it's a very exciting space and uh, it's very complex. So I'm I'm really excited on the work that you're doing. Uh, so you you also have a. Um, so you have a strong discovery platform, and it's really endorsed by the progression of your three leading assets that are in clinic. Could you could you um, highlight what the key differentiators are from your peers? Yeah, I would say that that this um, unique platform is really the differentiator here, uh, because with the knowledge, uh, all the data generated for more than thousand candidates and, and molecules that put in this um, in this database uh, and with machine learning and AA based analysis um, the the candidates are selected uh, our own calculations where we have looked into peers there how they have been doing we can see that we have a probability with more than three times better success rate bringing our candidates from uh, candidate drag into later stage of clinical programs. And, and maybe you can kind of highlight your three assets as well. Uh, you have Mesopotam, Pirpamat, and then IRL 757. Yes, if we start with Mesopotam, which is um, a candidate that is developed for um, levodopa dyskinesia. This is something that many uh, individuals with Parkinson's disease suffer from when they have been treated for, for some time with the levodopa. Um, and, and this candidate is phase three ready now. Um, so we are currently preparing to go in in, in, in uh, clinical phase three. Uh, we are, are having regulatory interactions and then we are uh, working to find a partner to, to do the phase three program here. Um, so then we have the second candidate, which is peripmat, 
Um, and that candidate is um, developed for, uh, for um, I would say, falls and for instability. This is something that um, probably 45% of all individuals with Parkinson's disease, they, they suffer from this. Um, so it's a lot of people um, and uh, the, it's a very big market, of course. So uh, it's important for us to take this further. And, and this is really um, a, a new indication. No, nothing is uh, available or in, in development for, for this specific indication. So that's very important. Um, and here we have an ongoing study in phase two right now uh, that we're looking forward to get results from. Uh, and then the third clinical candidate, it's uh, 757. Uh, uh, and that's uh, a candidate to be developed for apathy. Uh, and that could be both in Parkinson and in Alzheimer's disease. Uh, this candidate has just entered uh, phase one uh, in a phase one um, um, first in human study. Uh, and we are really proud uh, because this first study has been financed by Michael J. Fox Foundation. Um, and then in addition to this, we have uh, recently uh, a collaboration that we have started with MSRD Utsuka, a Japanese company, uh, and they are going to uh, finance and fund all the development up to uh, proof of principle. Um, so it's quite amazing that already for this candidate that we have funding all the way through up to proof of concept. Yeah, and, and besides your clinical stage assets, you, you have a, a very active preclinical uh um, platform, right? I mean, in addition to the, the ISP discovery platform, could could you uh, could you speak to these? Yes, uh, what we have here is really, and I should have said that already from the beginning. All these candidates are actually unique in the way that they are first in class. They are new um, sort of new mechanism, um, so it's it's really good. Um, so and, and unique and the. First preclinical uh, candidate here that we are talking about is 942. Uh, and the target indication here is um, targeting, uh, uh, I would say, cognitive function in all different types of neurological disorders, which is quite broad. Uh, so and we know that about 12% of all uh, individuals above 65% experience uh, this type of cognitive dysfunction. So it's going to be a very big market here too. Um, and um, then we have 1117, the last but not least one, because this we think has a huge opportunity here to be a new generation of Parkinson treatments. Um, and like Levodopa, which is the golden standard right now, this has the same kind of mechanism, a D1, D2 um, uh, receptor agonist, but without any side effects. Uh, and, and side effects is very, very common and uh, a, a, a very common complication uh, with levodopa. So we believe that, uh, as in front of us, that we can develop this one to be really the, the, the basic treatment for most of the people, individuals diagnosed with Parkinson in the future. Yeah, that's that's a lot. So may, maybe um, for investors, it will be helpful to know what, what the next milestones and callus will be for the next 12 to 18 months. Yes, sure. It's, it's very exciting uh, because we do have a number of upcoming key milestones and value adding um, activities now, both for, for, for the company and for its shareholders. Uh, so if we start with Mestopiton, uh, we are currently having ongoing interactions with the regulatory authorities in Europe. Earlier this year, we had a very good and successful meeting with the FTA about the phase three program. And we do the similar way here with the Europe. So we can have a studies that will be um, that will really be, uh, I would say, successful um, and meet the, all the requirements in both regions, in the US and in Europe. Uh, and then for Peripimat, we have, uh, we, in September now, we are doing are going to complete um, the recruitment. Um, and when we have all the patients in the trial, 
then we can expect to get a results from this um, phase 2b study sometimes first half of 2025, uh, which is very exciting. So hopefully we, then we will have two candidates ready to start uh, phase 3. Uh, and then we have uh, 757. Uh, we have the ongoing uh, first in human the clinical study um, and we are planning to have the study completed by end of the year and then to start uh, a, a proof of principle study in, next year um, and then for the two preclinical assets uh, we are pairing both of them to go into to first in human study first in man clinical studies um, the who or the plan is to go there um, first half of 2025. So you can see it's it's a lot of things happening in our lab right now, and it's really exciting time. Yeah, it's it's a really exciting time. So I, I appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. Thank you all for joining us here today. If you'd like to learn more about our lab, please refer to edisongroup.com. Thank you. <laughs>